After a while, they find that that initial zeal and fervent desire to serve the Lord with all of their heart, mind, and soul begins to wane a bit. When they keep praying to God and yet they don't hear an audible response from God. And because they cannot hear him and see him, then over a period of time, the seeds of doubt will begin to creep into their mindset, which left unattended will slowly erode their faith in God. And that situation can very easily progress to the point where the person becomes an agnostic. And for such a person, their point of view is simply this. I believe only what I see and what I can hear. And just what does one do when one encounters an agnostic? A person who professes to have no faith or belief in God, who also tells you, I'm from Missouri, and I believe only what I can see with my naked eye. And then that person will tell you that they have never seen God. But then they will try to bait you into their trap by asking you, have you ever seen God with your naked eye? Well, when it comes to God, the truth of the matter is, no one has seen the face of God with their naked eyes. And this fact is confirmed to us in the first chapter of St. John and the 12th verse. No one has ever seen God, but his only son, who is himself God, is near to the Father's heart. He has told us about him. Yes, no one has seen the face of God and lived. Not even a man who was the apple of God's eye and was beloved of God. And the man that I'm referring to is King David. And although King David never had a face-to-face -face encounter with God and saw the face of God with his naked eye, yet David knew without a shadow of a doubt that God's spirit was ever present in his life. And just what was it that enabled David to have such a steadfast assurance in a God that he could not see? Well, David was able to accomplish this by using his eyes, his spiritual eyes, his eyes of faith. A faith that is made up of an unquestioning belief in God, a belief that does not require proof or evidence. For it tells us in the 11th chapter of Hebrews and the first verse, what is faith? It is the confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen. It is the evidence of things we cannot yet see. And this kind of unwavering and steadfast faith in God will not go unnoticed by God and it will cause God to move on your behalf in a mighty way. Yes, when you seek God with all of your heart, all of your mind, and all of your soul, then blessings will flow into your life. And the key to receiving blessings from God lies in your willingness to accept God's will for your life. And that is for you to accept His Son, Jesus Christ, the mediator and intercessor between God and mankind. For Jesus Christ himself assures us in the 14th chapter of St. John and the 6th verse, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And just what is the benefit of doing it God's way well, that's explained to us in the 16th chapter of St. John and the 23rd through the 24th verse from the highest authority from Jesus Christ himself. For he tells us, at that time, 
You won't need to ask me for anything. The truth is, you can go directly to the Father and ask Him, and He will grant your request because you use my name. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name, and you will receive, and you will have abundant joy. And to activate these blessings to flow into your life, it requires only one thing on your part. Faith. Faith, not only in the integrity of Jesus Christ's promise to you, but also faith in a God that you cannot see with your naked eyes. And yet, he's a God who loves you very, very much. And he wants you to enjoy life to its fullest and to enjoy his blessings and his protection. And the only thing that is required of you is for you to accept his gift of salvation, which is his son, Jesus Christ. And there is no other way but Jesus Christ. And when you accept Jesus Christ into your life, he, in turn, will cause you to have an abundant and fulfilling life in this life and the life in the hereafter. For Jesus tells us in the 10th chapter of St. John and the 10th verse, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give life in all of its fullness. The choice is yours to make. Because, you have ne because if you have never accepted Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior, you can do so right now. If you're willing to take this simple step of faith of lifting your hands with me and repeating these words, my Heavenly Father, I love you. And I thank you, Father, for giving me this opportunity to receive eternal salvation and to become a part of your family by me coming to you and repenting of my sins, which I am doing right now. Father, forgive me of the sins I have done knowingly and unknowingly. And Father, I want you to know that I believe the words that were spoken by this man of God, that you really do love me and care about me. And you have provided for me a way of escaping the damnation of hell by my acceptance of your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. And Father, I'm doing it right now. I'm confessing with my mouth what I believe in my heart, that Jesus Christ is your son. A son who came to this earth some 2,000 years ago, who eventually went to a Roman cross and died for me. He was buried in a grave for, for a number of days, but then he rose from that grave and he now sits in a seat of honor next to you, acting as my intercessor, pleading my case before you. I thank you, Father, for Jesus and I thank you, Father, for providing this way of escape from the fire of hell by simply having me accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, for not giving up on me, but waiting for this day right now when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And Father, I promise for the rest of my life, I will live only to do your will and to bring honor into your name. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, amen and amen. That was all that it took. You have received eternal salvation from a God who loves you very, very much and has now included you into his family, the family of God. And God loves you so much that he wants the very best for you. He's aware of everything that's going on in your life right now. 
He knows all about you. He knows your problems, your wants. All he wants you to do is for you to lean upon him and trust him. And when you do that, prepare yourself to receive a mighty miracle from God. I want you to do something with me right now. I want you to lift your hands. And in so doing, it's acting as a point of contact. It's letting God know that you are expecting a miracle from him. Lift those hands with me. Heavenly Father, as I and thousands of other people throughout the Miami Valley are lifting our hands, it's our way of saying to you, Father, that we expect a miracle and we have faith in your promises and the promises of your son. And Jesus said that if we ask anything of you in his name, you would provide it for us. And Father, for those people who are lifting their hands right now, I want them to see your mighty power in their life and for them to know and see your presence and feel your presence by the manifestation of your miracles in their life. Father, whatever the needs of the people may be, whether it's physical, financial, in relationships, or they may be seeking a closer relationship with you, whatever it is, fulfill that need with a special miracle that's designed for them. You know, each and every one who's lifting their hands, they're swallowing their pride they're saying unto you, Father, I've done it my way, but my way has led to failure. They're doing it your way, Father. And Father, reward their faith with mighty, mighty miracles. And let those miracles take place right now, immediately, Father. And Father, we're confident that it's taking place at this very moment. And Father, we promise that we will give you the praise and the honor for these miracles and for our salvation. And for the rest of our life, we will praise your name and the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you. Thank you for the miracles that are taking place right now. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen and amen. miracle is yours. All you've got to do right now is accept it by faith and then begin to lift your hands and begin to thank God for your miracle. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I want to take this time to thank you very much for watching and I'd like to invite you to write to us. You can do so by writing to David Woods, Post Office Box 2102, Dayton, Ohio, 45401. Or you can call us at 263-4213. We have of myself and my sons, David and Devin Woods, we'd like to remind you to read your Bible every day and then pray. And may God bless you and your family.